Hello. It is Wednesday, July 28th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, so we are halfway through the week and roughly halfway through the difficulty curve. I always find Wednesday puzzles to be satisfying puzzles. There's something to sink your teeth into there, but they are not, they're not brutal. Um, always a good, it's a good midweek puzzle, exactly as intended. This one's by Alex Rosen and Brad Wilbur. And before we get into it, I wanted to very quickly revisit one clue from yesterday because it was something that I really should have, uh, should have remembered and didn't. Um, as Nils Worth pointed out in the comments yesterday, the Swiss cheese with that is famous for its holes is, of course, Emmentaler cheese, or in French, it would be Emmental. And uh, of course, that is what we mean when many of us simply refer to Swiss cheese. We mean Emmentaler cheese with the holes. That's sort of um, semi-hard, nutty, pale yellow cheese. That's what that is. So sorry about that. Um, and I think let's just get right on to the Wednesday puzzle. Why not? Uh, ready to get started? Okay. And we can already see that this puzzle by Alex Rosen and Brad Wilbur has some kind of theme going on because it has these uh, series of, these. it's interesting, these sort of linear series of circles arranged in one uh, horizontal, two horizontal rows going across the 17 and, and six, starting from the 17 and 61 across clues, and then two vertical orientations as well, sort of mirroring them almost. So who knows what that is going to be, but let's get going. So one across, we've got buds that are very close. This could be buds as in pals, friends. Um, it could be um, buds as in flowers, flower buds, plants. Now, if it is, it do, if it does mean friends, we could infer from the uh, the sort of slang term "bud" as opposed to "buddy," which I mean, I guess that in itself is slang, but the abbreviated form of the word that this could itself be a contraction or an acronym. Uh, and the reason I say acronym is because maybe it's BFFs for best friends forever. Let's look at the crosses. Oops, is that not working? There we go. Conks. Um, could be sort of bops, bops someone on the head, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's keep looking. Unoccupied. Oh, I was trying to make this BFFs work, but I'm not sure now. Um, because that doesn't, I don't know what would start with F and be unoccupied. Let's keep looking. Cheese in a Spanakopita. Well, that's feta. So maybe I just can't think of what unoccupied with an F would be. But cheese in a Spanakopita, which is the Greek. Um, spinach and cheese filled pastry dish very delicious is feta cheese i think so let's let's put that in there let's put bffs in buds that are very close and keep going so booze hounds could this be souses is that cr i don't know i'm not sure if that's if i'm thinking of the right thing there cookie that has been deemed kosher since 1997 well if that is if this does start with an S-O, then this would certainly look like Oreo. And then we've got conks. It does look like bops, which is what I said earlier. Oh, and of course, if something is unoccupied, unoccupied, it is free. Yes, yes, yes. So. So this probably is souses. And then here we have Porky's significant other. This is probably Porgy Pig from cartoons. And I have a sort of long dormant memory that this might be Petunia Pig. Let's go out on a limb and put that in there and see. So make wise through, you can see I'm still <laughs> resistant to this souses because I'm, I'm not completely confident. Um, to make wise through experience. Ah, to season. Yes, as in a seasoned pro, a seasoned veteran, that sort of thing. Uh, let's just go ahead and put that in. <laughs> Noted colonial pamphleteer. That would be, this is referring to the colony established on the continent of North America by the British. And so this would be uh, Payne, Tom Payne. Senora Perón. This is referring to 
uh, Eva or Eva Perone, which is it? Eva or Eva? For those who think young, sloganeer once. I'm not sure, so I'm going to leave that first vowel embarrassingly bare for the time being. No, free. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thinking of a different synonym of unoccupied. Uh, walled city of Spain. Um, I can't bring it to mind. Let's look at the crosses here. Small hard seed. Could it be a pip? A moccasin? Well, a moccasin is a shoe or a slipper. Neither of those fits. But it's also an animal, isn't it? A water moccasin. It's not just a shoe or a slipper. Let's keep looking. False friend in Shakespeare. This is probably Iago. Uh, for those who think young sloganeer once. So I don't, I don't think I'm familiar with the slogan, but when I look at the crosses here, it certainly looks like Pepsi. And I could imagine a soda having that sort of slogan for some reason. Drainage collector. Uh, I feel as though could, this could be a number of types of drains and collectors. So let's keep going for the time being. Sports event in which athletes try to avoid being touched. Um, so this is probably fencing. I think in fencing, um, a successful hit strike on the, the opponent is called the touch, I think. And so I think what we're looking for is here is a pay, which is also the term that you could use for the, the sword itself. Let's check the crosses. Like times that are the most expensive. Could it be near? In other words, a time that's coming up if you're buying a ticket or something is going to be more expensive? Uh, seems a little shaky. Chicago Exchange in brief. Okay. So the in brief tells us we're looking for an abbreviated form of the answer. And what this is referring to is, I think not a stock exchange, but I think a commodities exchange. And I think is re re referring to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or the Merc. Somewhat. Um, I mean, the first thing that came to mind is a pittance, but that doesn't really fit. It's not really the same part of speech as somewhat. So I'm not sure. Babe in the Arctic. So here we're looking probably for a youngster in the Arctic. It would be an animal, presumably. So maybe seal pup. A drainage collector. Ah, okay, here. So sump is in a... um. What you know when it's what is that? It sort of pumps out the the waste of a drainage. I'm not uh, probably not uh, phrasing that correctly because I'm I'm not incredibly familiar with the the sort of workings of that sort of thing. Like times that are most expensive. Ah, yeah, okay. This is not near. It is peak peak times. Of course, are more expensive. If you're buying a ticket on public transport or something like that, sometimes peak times are more expensive. Uh, Gillette razor handle. All right. So <laughs> this is legitimately, in my opinion, a piece of what I would call crossword ease. In other words, a clue that I would only ever know because it appears in crosswords and it is the only time in my life I have ever used this knowledge. And I'm pretty sure it is Atra, a Gillette razor brand name that I haven't a clue if it still exists, if it's in use, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it is certainly still in use in crossword puzzles. Um, I would say, honestly, once, I mean, at least once every couple months, this comes up. So it's a good one to know. C53 across. Looks like it could be Pollock a fish or Jackson Pollock, the artist. Isn't Pollock a fish? Uh, with 21 across, artist known... Ah, okay, it is Jackson Pollock. With 21 across, artist known to 39 across pigments back and forth onto canvases. So Jackson Pollock um, was an artist who was very well known for his, I think, what it was called splatter paintings, where he would take a brush with paint and sort of swipe it, and then the pattern it would create these dramatic splatter patterns on the canvas. So... Um, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but when you see this with clue, the clue that contains the with is going to, what that means is it's, a, it's at least a two part, could be two, three, four, whatever, 
could be it could be several part cl- uh, clue that involves filling answers into several spaces on the grid. But the one that has the width is going to be the first word. So this 53 cross, because it's the one that says with 21 across, it will be the first word and 21 across will be the second word. And in this case, it will be Jackson Pollock Painter. And I think it's P-O-L-L-A-C-K. Let's see. Somewhat. Oh, okay, I'm just going to skip that for now. Um, and then what? which was the other? Yes, the 39 across. So I think, as I was saying, I think this would be splatter. Oops, no, I guess not. Oh, no, wait. Maybe it's spatter. Maybe it was spatter painting, not splatter. Let's try that. Let's look at the crosses. Daffy Duck, notably. Oh, maybe it's not that, because I think this is this is interesting. So we've got this cartoon... We've got this cartoon cross here. Oh, so for one thing, those both deal with illustration because Daffy Duck and Porky Pig are both cartoons. And that could be that could be part of the theme. It could be sort of just a soft allusion to the theme. But also, going back to this Petunia Pig reveals uh, paint spelled backwards in these circles. And that obviously relates directly to Jackson Pollock. And here we can also see paint... So this is an O, not an A. Sorry about that. Um, so I think I know what this noun is going to be here. It's going to be up to a point, uh, somewhat up to a point. I, you know, I, 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 I can solve these crosswords quickly up to a point when I hit sort of arbitrary, seemingly arbitrary walls, uh, mental walls, um, and because that creates paint in these circles and feeds into that theme clue. Um, so, what, and then that corrected my spelling there as well. So let's see. Letters at a bar. Um, probably IPA as in India Pale Ale. I think that came up in a crossword about a week ago. A very bitter, hoppy beer that's very popular in the sort of modern uh, craft brew movement. So, oh, right. Sorry, I forgot what I was, I got carried away. I was looking at this Daffy Duck clue, and it makes me think my spatter here is incorrect because... Daffy Duck, the cartoon character, notably, he is a lisper. He speaks with a very pronounced lisp. And I'm pretty sure that's what this is going to be, especially with the L-A kicking it off. So I don't think my spatter is correct. Known to what pigments back and forth onto canvas? I don't know. It'll probably become quite obvious once we have a couple of crosses. All right, so we can look here. We've got half of this word filled in, and the clue is attempt to block. And so based on what we have, that's clearly going to be oppose. If you oppose something, you're attempting to block it. And if something is terrific, it is super. This theme is turning out to be just super, I think. We'll see. Like an oboe's sound. Oboe, I think, was a was a clue this week, earlier this week, or an answer this, this week, I should say. Not a clue. Today, it's a clue. And I think what it's getting at, so an oboe is a wind instrument, and it's a woodwind instrument that uses a, a reed to... Um, produce its distinctive sound, and that sound, as a result of that reed, is reedy. It's um, it's hard to describe, but it almost sort of sounds, it, it really does sort of sound like air going through wood, which is which is what's happening, I suppose, but it, it has very much that, that reedy sound. Um, fragrant component. Um, I think this is a chemical component called an ester that's used in perfumes and things of that nature. Let's look at the crosses to see. Suffix with quart, quartz, quartzite. I mean, ite is often used as a suffix for, um, you know, minerals or ores or things. I'm, I'm, I'm not educated enough to, to tell you in detail, but something, that sort of thing. Ned, Homer's neighbor on the Simpsons, Ned, and that sounds right, Ned Flanders. I completely whiffed a Simpsons clue recently, but this one I certainly at least know. A modest reply to a compliment would be, I try. I try. We all try. We all give it our best. It's all we can do. That's cool, Daddy-O. In quote marks indicating this too will be a phrase, most likely. And uh, I dig it. I dig this crossword so far. Oklahoma's state tree. I'm not sure. I'm not going to bother trying to guess at trees. Let's just come back to it. Uh, Go all the way back to the top where we sort of uh, we sort we've sort of curved around the grid here, but let's return back to the northwest quadrant for Veterans Day month, which um, 
it's a holiday in the United States and it occurs, uh, I'd actually, to be totally frank with you, this is embarrassing. I don't know that I would have remembered, but um, even if you don't know this holiday, you can be pretty clear the answer is November because what else would be in there? And if something is exceedingly a certain way, it is ever so that way. Ah, so a moccasin, in fact, is a slip-on. It is referring to the shoe. There we go. And so the walled city of Spain is a vila. I thought it was a v. I, I, I would have gotten this wrong if I guessed. I was thinking a vina or something, um, but I wasn't confident, rightfully so. <laughs> so um, I didn't put it in, and now we see that it's a vila. Indian flatbread. Well, this would be a roti. Indian food, uh, delicious. Roti, no exception. Accept responsibility for own. If you're going to own it, you're going to accept responsibility for it. A signal that a reply is coming in a messaging app. I assume this is referring to the ellipses you see uh, in a lot of apps when someone is typing, and you could also refer to those as dots. And here we see this paint is most likely going to be... Um, is going to persist throughout the puzzle. I was thinking maybe there would be different words, but once once there are two paints in there, it's probably going to be in all four. It would be odd to have two here and then two elsewhere, although certainly not implausible or outside of the realm of possibility. But for now, let's fill paint in here. That's sort of fun. Someone was pointing out in the comments that they were sort of irritated. Oh, interesting. So this points across here and sort of intersects with this, but it isn't, uh, that makes me maybe a little more doubtful because if this were paint running backwards, it would be painta, or if it were paint running to the right, it would be a paint. And I assume that's not meant to be part of it. Maybe that's just sort of how the construction worked out but it makes me a little less confident about putting these in. Anyway, what I was saying was someone in the comments was sort of irritated at me, understandably, I suppose, when I was doing the um, that really incredible, absolutely incredible astronomical theme the other day by Shandi Deitmer with the um, Polaris and the Ursa Majoris stars and all those things. And they, they pointed out that I could have simply gone ahead once I knew that all of the theme circles were a sort of IX pair, I could have gone in and filled them all and it would have made some of the crosses easier and I didn't do that. Um, so uh, I was thinking maybe I'd do it today. To, uh, and here we see a gem that's a woman's name and we know that's going to be a P there. So what is a gem that also serves as a woman na woman's name? Well, it's an opal. And that maybe ties in with that quartz, quartzite a little bit. And also opals, gemstones are used in art. So you could sort of say it ties in. Anyway, that does reveal which direction this is probably going to go, assuming it's it's paint. And here we have Blank Station, Central London Railway Terminal. Well, um, this will be Paddington. Paddington Station, an absolutely gorgeous railway terminus that is an incredible pain to get to if you don't happen to live on a transit line near it. It is enormously inconvenient to get to Paddington Station um, from much of the rest of central London, despite it being in central London. It's gorgeous and in a very nice part of town, but a real pain. Okay, um, what am I doing? Let's, where are we gonna go? Let's go back. So now that we've got the top sort of third or so, maybe top 40% complete, let's just start moving back through the puzzle in order. I don't think we've looked at very many of these down clues. What you need some wiggle room to do. I don't actually know, to be honest. I mean, dress to get dressed? I don't know. Uh, Beetlejuice's constellation. Is it Orion? Let's let's look at the crosses. Diatribe trigger. Could be ire, as in if someone sort of raises your ire, they might trigger a diatribe. Where you might find love away from home. So this has a question mark, which indicates there's something sort of cute or punny going on. Love is the sort of oddly phrased way that a score of zero in a tennis game is said, which derives from the French for egg. In other words, looking like a zero, luf. And so this is probably tennis camp where you might be away from home and find love the score. Original blank, this would be a biblical reference, original sin. 
what you need some wiggle room to do. Well, maybe it's disco as in dance, D disco dancing, perhaps. Uh, let's look. So here we have Pat who wrote The Prince of Tides and The Great Santini. Actually, not sure. Source of Some Rings. Well, it could be Onion, Onion Ring. Um, Pacific Food Fish. So a fish from the Pacific Ocean, I assume, that is used as food. What is that? You know, I don't know off the top of my head. Let's, I, I mean, it's probably a word we'll all know, but we will see more easily once we have some crosses. A dreamboat of a guy. I don't know. Official proceedings. Um, could be a right, uh, sort of an unofficial right. Weep. Could be sob or cry. Low ranking sailor. Swabby? That's too many letters. What is this? I'm not sure. Hmm. Right, hitting some resistance here for me anyway. Greeting in Rio. Uh, that would be hola, right? Or not? So in Rio they would speak Portuguese, not Spanish. What is the what is hello? Let's look at the cross. Male hedgehog. What is a male hedgehog referred to? Is it, a, I don't know, a bear? I'm just saying that because that might be A, but I'm not sure. B blank, motto for Wikipedia contributors. Be fair? I have no idea what the motto for Wikipedia contributors is. Uh, boy, not a great, not a great segment of the puzzle for me. Let's keep looking. Industry that encourages strikes industry that encourages strikes. So because of the question mark, this probably isn't strike in the sense of industrial action. It might be strikes in the sense of um, like mining or sports, three strikes, you're out sort of thing. I don't actually know. Uh, Oklahoma State 3, Melodic Passage. I want to say this is going to start with AR as an Arioso or something like that. Arioso, recycle. Recycle blank, sign on a bin. Why am I, what am I, I am losing it, I feel. Succeed and then some. I don't know if this Arioso is correct. Let's get rid of this. Palindromic guy's name. Well, we know for one thing, at the very least, if this is a palindrome, it's going to have a T here because a palindrome reads identically in each direction. And so if there's a T in the second letter, there must also be a T in the penultimate letter. And so probably this is auto because um, there aren't very many names you could fill. Uh, that does suggest maybe this area so might be correct. Uh, leaning to the right, abbreviation. So this could arguably have a question mark on it, but it doesn't need to because it is literally true. Um, I think it's referring to italicized text, if text is italic. Ah, recycle blank, recycle only. I'm sorry, that should have been more obvious. In other words, no rubbish here, just recycling, recycle only. That means this probably is Arioso. Uh, to succeed and then some. Why am I not seeing that? One leaning to the right. Oh, wow, very clever. So we've got... Leaning to the right, abbreviation, and then right below it, we've got one leaning to the right. And this is, of course, a Tory, a, a member of the Conservative Party in the UK, which is the, the uh, right-leaning party in the UK. So, oh, okay. To succeed and then some is to soar. That should have been more obvious, I'm sorry. To metaphorically soar, to do very, very well. A samovar... Well, a samovar is a kind of tea urn, an urn. Uh, taunts so as to get a reaction. Well, it's going to end with an S, we can assume, right? Because it's because we're trying, we have to match this taunts. So let's look here. Jetes, e.g. Um, so that refers to a leap in uh, ballet. Maybe figure skating, but I think it's called something else in a figure skating. Would that be an axle in figure skating? Um, NARC's organization, this would be a U.S. agency, the um, Drug Enforcement Agency. NARC as in uh, uh, narcotics 
cult agent who collects drugs on raids and things like that. A tango flourish, so this is the dance, the tango flourish would be a, flourish would be a dip. If one suffered a wipeout, one ate it, unfortunately. Always disappointing when you really eat it on a crossword. Highly decorated, uh, ornate, relatively straightforward. Oklahoma's state tree. I, I still don't know. <laughs> Biology or chemistry abbreviated. Those are each sciences. And because it's an it's or, we know that we're only referring to any one of them. So it's singular. So science, not sciences. A dreamboat of a guy. Ah, okay, I see. So this is um, referring back to myth and a dreamboat of a guy could be referred to as an Adonis. Official proceedings. Uh, so it's not, it wasn't a right. Um, this could be acts. In other words, official decrees or dicta, official acts pronounced. Oh, maybe not. Oh, it could be acta, plural. Um, could be acta. I was, because I was thinking this S doesn't really fit with this SW, but it could be an A here. Um, I still don't know. I want to say it starts with swab, but I'm not sure. So let's look at the cross. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Make art like Jackson Pollock, as suggested by this puzzle circle, circled letters. So maybe it's dribble. In other words, not spattering, but dribbling the paint on the canvas, which um, I think he did also do that splatter spatter thing, but but uh, this also sounds completely correct. Greeting in Rio. So maybe it is hola, but let's come back to it. Weep. So, if, okay. So it is cry it is the most straightforward thing. Weep, cry. Pat, who wrote The Prince of Tides and The Great Santini, looks like Conroy, doesn't it? But let's look at the cross. Pacific food fish. Oh, uh, rock fin or something? What is this? What is, I can't bring it to mind. Taunts so as to get a reaction. Um, so, oh, I see. So it's baits. If you bait somebody, you're sort of asking for trouble. You're trying to get a rise out of them. Oklahoma's state tree. So it ends with bud, which certainly sounds like the name of a plant, but I don't. Red bud, I don't know. B blank, motto for Wikipedia contributors. I just, I just don't, I just do not know that answer. <laughs> so this is sort of dangerous. I'm running into a situation where I'm running out of things that are, that are easily coming to mind. Uh, come together. Uh, so it could be join but let's look at the crosses. Remove from danger informally. That's not join because uh, remove removal from danger informally. Um, I guess this actually, I read it as remove incorrectly. It could You could read this as remove from danger or removal from danger if in fact the answer is evac because you could use that as a noun or a verb. Uh, a long ride. This has a question mark which suggests something is sort of a pun. So let's keep looking. Running shoe brand. I think the running shoe brand is Avia or Avia, that sounds right. Organization for Lieutenant Columbo. You know, I've actually never seen Columbo. <laughs> seen Peter Falk and other things. Uh, he's in a really great um, Elaine May movie called uh, Mikey and Nikki, I think, uh, where he is just excellent, but I've actually never seen Columbo. But I know he's some kind of detective, so this presumably ends with PD. Is it the Los Angeles Police Department? Is that where Columbo detects. Maybe it is. Uh, so come together. So that looks like gel, G-E-L-L -L, as in jelly, uh, sort of sets. And a long ride is a limo. So so we see the question mark. It suggests, yeah, I suppose so. It's not really a pun. I guess it is a pun, but it is technically also true that a long ride is a limo. Ah, Pacific food fish. So this looks like rock cod. I mean, cod is definitely a fish. Rock cod sounds like a thing. Conroy sounds like a name. So there we go. We just have this middle section left. Ah, so this swabby. I thought I said that before. I must have spelled it incorrectly. That does look like it, what it probably is. Um, so this could be red bud. I don't know. Industry that encourages strikes. Oh, oil, as in striking oil, the oil industry. That that's good. That's a nice. That's a nice clue. Um, B blank. Be bold? Motto for Wikipedia contributors? That just, that doesn't seem like what, Wikipedia doesn't really seem like it's about boldness, but 
I can't think what else this would be. It must be be bold. I guess we'll find out in a moment. And a male hedgehog, I assume, is a boar. And then greeting Rio is, in fact, well, shouldn't say in fact, but I suspect it is Ola, as I originally suspected, but wasn't confident about. And there we go. That is the Wednesday puzzle. Um, that's that's very much a Wednesday puzzle, right? It's uh, it's pretty straightforward most of the time. Um, I had a little chunk here that gave me some resistance and slowed down the solve. And uh, that's a that is classic classic Wednesday puzzle uh, difficulty, I would say. And then we've got this nicely constructed theme around Jackson Pollock. I wonder if it's his, um, I don't know, an anniversary of his birthday or death or one of his works or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we've got this dribble. Oh, and then and then uh, I didn't even pick up on this when I was solving the puzzle, but we see here that the, it is dribble painting. And so dribble paint is sort of pictorial, it is sort of semi-verbally slash pictorially represented throughout the grid here because we've got dribble and then we've got the paint that is sort of dribbled across the canvas in every sort of order and uh, arbitrary sort of spacing between the letters. So very well done, uh, very well constructed. We, I, I keep saying this, but it keeps being true, so it bears repeating. We really are on a run in recent months of many themes and very well-constructed, clever themes. Um, Alex Rosen and Brad Wilbur, in this case, put together a really nice theme that tied together well. Um, as is always nice, we have a little bit of, not necessarily additional theme answers, but sort of tips of the hat towards the theme with two different cartoon character references. Um, the Petunia Pig, who's actually contains the paint here. I mean, uh, the character is herself illustrated. And then there was another one somewhere else, and I don't, I'm don't. i not going to hunt around for it, but there was another one somewhere. Uh, so a nice little touch of theming as well. And uh, yeah, a very nice puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this Wednesday puzzle. And as always, I do hope you're enjoying the channel and this daily solve. And if you do, why not subscribe? If you hit the subscribe button, you will be sure to see this solve every morning as it goes up. And uh, if you are enjoying this series quite a bit, uh, you could support me directly in the creation of this series and help me make it a sustainable daily activity. And you can do that by going to my coffee page, which is linked in the description underneath the video. Um, and thank you so much to everyone who has contributed. It really does mean a lot to me, and it makes it much more likely that I will figure out the, um, I guess, sort of long-term strategy around this thing and, and how, I, how I keep doing it. Um, it's going to get a little more challenging in the coming weeks because of some changes uh, in the structure of my life, but I'm really hoping that uh, I, can, I, I sort of intentionally started this series during a period when I knew I would have the time to do it, and that's going to get a bit more challenging in the coming weeks, but I'm hoping I can figure out a way to make it work uh, as, an, as an ongoing daily affair. So thank you to everyone who's helping me figure that out with your support, uh, as well as with your support simply by spreading the word. I mean, that's, that's incredibly important, and that's a big thing I haven't really figured out yet either, is how to spread the word about this thing so that it can reach a sort of critical mass that will help make it sustainable. Anyway, that's enough blathering from me. As always, I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I hope you have a great Wednesday, and I will see you tomorrow for the Thursday crossword. Take care. Mm -hmm.